Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. Very good while they're setting it up. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. So uh, my name is Dolores Cahill, and I would just first of all like to thank very much the organizers of this meeting. And I have to say, it's wonderful to see so many people here, so many brave people. We all know what's going on. And also, I'd say the organization is wonderful, and the sound, and the video, and the translation. And I think that's really important at this time to get the message out, not just to the English-speaking people, but to everyone around the world. This one. This one. Mm -hmm. Very slow computer, so Great. be patient. Page up and page down. Can stuff. you put it on full screen? Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, sorry. Just, I, oh, yeah. Adjust the microphone. Sorry. Great. Thank you. That's, that's the line. Perfect. Please, and please close. So um, you, many of you may know me. My name is uh, Professor Dolores Cahill, and my background is molecular biology and immunology. And I don't know if many of you feel that from the minute, in a way, I was born, I grew up on a beautiful farm in a very rural area in County Tipperary in Ireland. And when I was very young, a pharmaceutical company came into our valley, and they were poisoning the valley and killing the animals. And my father was, in a very small way, involved in providing samples from, you know, the first in the first winter, 17 of our calves were born deformed and died, uh, were born dead, which was very unusual. But I was you know, just in primary school then and spent 10 years following the court case where the uh, agents of the state and the lawful, the legal system did not actually give us justice. And we were helped by a similar situation in Puerto Rico where the similar, it was Merck Sharp and Dome had done something similar and people from Puerto Rico came to inform farmers in Tipperary, and the precedence case was won in the Supreme Court in Ireland by a farmer, John Hanrahan. And so I studied science because I saw that this was a scientific process. It could have been sorted very early. And when I went on to do my degree in PhD, I was aware that the tools that were used in diagnostics and in research were giving incorrect results. And I, I immediately said, no, we have to develop technology to identify if an antibody is sold against something that will diagnose you of a disease such as cancer. It needs to be accurate and true. And I decided to give science one year at a time because I've also worked in Gherkin factories. I can drive tractors and I'm just uh, a farmer's daughter with a lot of common sense. And also on our farm, which I think is really important, we grew up in Ireland uh, and particularly in my family with a sense of freedom that no one has the right to come into your house and no one has the right to tell you what to do, and no one has the right to coerce you, that this is unlawful and criminal behavior. And this actually, I'll talk about it, is around the natural law, okay? That we just are free. And I think what we've had is we have been betrayed as a generation. That the people that we as a society have put our trust in, the doctors, the politicians, the people who are acting in the legal profession, and the doctors and scientists and teachers have really betrayed us and betrayed a generation. And what we have to do is the duty to stand together, to tell initially young children, to actually educate them that we are free and we have our inalienable rights and nothing written down can take them away. So that is really my fundamental message. And as you know, with many others in Trafalgar Square last year, um, when I came out, my first videos were in May 2020. And I knew that coronaviruses, if, they, if this one is real, would only cause symptoms up till the end of April. So once it's May, there was never any need for any of these restrictions ever. And there is Nobel Prize winning prevention and treatments, as we know, ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, and zinc, vitamin D. So there was never any basis for this. And if you are aware of what's going on, I was able to say back then that they will censor people, ignore prevention and treatments. They will try and censor those of us speaking out. And then they will force an mRNA injection on people that really only enhances illness and disease. And this is, I said that in May 2020. And in the Dell Big Tree interview, I said, I'm speaking to the future and I'm speaking to lawful cases of accountability and crimes against humanity that will happen in the years to come. Because many of you who are awake will know that this plan has been 
rolled out for centuries, but particularly in the last 20 or 30 years. So I think part of what I'm going to tell you now is to call for action, that we should not be frustrated that we are only really gathering ourselves to build the wonderful new world that may take us 5, 10, 20 years to build the basic pillars. All of us need to be psychologically prepared for what is going to come in the next six months or the next year. But I have huge hope, and I, am, I think we are very honored to be alive in this time. I think we are really privileged, and we are privileged to be among the group of network people around the world. And this is why we set up the World Doctors' Alliance last year, and with many other brave people across the world. We have over 100 countries now in the World Freedom Alliance, and I'm very honored to be president of the World Freedom Alliance. And Dr. Heiko Schoening from Germany is here today, who's vice president, and we have Mads Pavik and many other people from the World Freedom Alliance. So I just want to show you the next slide that might put in context um, what I'm going to talk about. And this is news that I just got in the last half an hour or so. So if you can read that, it says that in the United Kingdom there is a warrant issued for my arrest today. A warrant out for my arrest because it says the charges are that in my speeches, including last year, um, that I said that the injections would cause harm and that they would cause significant adverse events. And that is why there is a warrant out for my arrest today, the 18th of August, 2021. Um, and I'm not sure if it's also valid in the country that I live, ERA or Ireland. Stay here. Exactly. <laughs> so partly, um, you know, I have been aware that there have been other warrants out for my arrest, uh, which were time limited or in a way what they're trying to do. As we know, they are censoring us, right? And they are trying to intimidate us, and they are also trying to intimidate our family. And when people uh, come to uh, work with me, they are also then targeted, you know, one person at a time. So it's like that game of whack-a-mole. So what we're doing in the World Freedom Alliance uh, is giving people the tools so that we can have networks of people. So the World Freedom Alliance is really not to replicate the brilliant work like you are doing in your organization and many doctors, Doctors for COVID Ethics, the World Doctors Alliance, and all of the freedom-loving grassroots movements and new enterprises. What we want to do is to just network people. Because really, as you'll see, we are being attacked on many fronts. And what the globalists want to do is to undermine people's confidence and to overwhelm people. And this is really a psychological battle. And the tools that they have is fear. But what the opposite of fear is hope. And what people now want to do, people are stunned. But why I'm saying this is one of the most wonderful times to be alive is that if we were telling people, you know, even a year ago, that really there is going to be an assault on people's health, and that 40 years ago, now I read it 20, 25 years ago, they said, so I read this, you know, in the 90s, that the, there would be a reduction in life expectancy and there would be significant deaths between the year 2020 and the end of the year 2025, people would have thought, no, that cannot be true. But now, in a way, for those of us who've known this for decades, this is really our time to be resilient and to guide people and to lead people and say that I have huge optimism because they have been destroying our society, deceiving and lying to us and betraying us, and we have not got access to justice for decades, and now it's time for us to build the tools of justice. So it's very easy to tell people how to be free, okay, that people haven't heard it before. It's very basic. We are born free. It comes from the very second that we are, enter this world, that we are alive and no one can take away your freedoms. So when people ask me, you know, they're locking us down or you can't travel, it's actually fear is in your mind and the whole paralysis that people feel is in their mind. So if you replace fear, because fear and worry are habits, you can actually learn the tools to not be afraid. And I read a great book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, around 30 years ago 
when I was also very concerned about what I was finding out. And if you are not afraid, your thoughts slow down, you can go into critical thinking mode and you can go into solution mode. So really the very basis is we are free. It comes from our inalienable rights of bodily integrity and in the hierarchy of law, these natural rights, our inalienable rights are superior. And then there are tools for how you get justice under natural law. So if you, if you know there is a hierarchy of law, natural law, inalienable rights are at the very top. And then these, how you then use the tools is you write notices of liability. So I have written notices of liability and so has the World Freedom Alliance to every prime minister and president because we have told them which is true under the natural law that everyone is accountable as the living man or living woman for their actions and their omissions. And these crimes, if you do something that cause harm, they can be accountable. There is no indemnity, whether they are the prime minister or whether they are the CEO of a pharmaceutical company. And the simple mechanism of carrying out this law is an ancient law and it comes from writing notices of liability. And then you write an affidavit and anyone can call a jury. This natural law is available to everybody in every country in the world. People just don't know it. You can call a trial by jury. I've held one uh, where we had 70 people. You can then report the proceedings of these trials to your superior courts in your country and they are enforceable. So we've already been successful in calling cases. And if everybody listens to my videos when I interact with the people dressed up as police and judges, I ask them a simple question, are you acting under oath? And they won't answer, and you ask their names. And that is the simple key to unravel and unlock accountability and the law. Because they won't give their name, because they know they are accountable in their private and personal capacity. And they won't answer, are they acting under oath? Because the oath is to uphold the law which is the rule of law, the natural law in each of our countries. And so the World Freedom Alliance then, we've written notices of liability. Mads Pavic will give you a brief summary. I don't know how much time I have, but if you want me to talk for a little bit more, I have more slides. Yeah, okay. So I just thought I wasn't sure. That... So what we've done in the World Freedom Alliance, then we had this um, movement in a way called hope and accountability. So they are the two things that are just the solutions. It's actually quite easy. And I was, you know, some of the talks were amazing yesterday. And I think in a way we are called on to not just in a way explain to people the chaos and the undermining of law that has got us here, you know, in detail. We all really know the history. What I think is needed now, we are in a moment where we have huge opportunity and what we need to do is to prevent the injection of people of childbearing age or p children and teenagers because what is going on is an assault on fertility. So if you know, I don't need to go into detail here in my videos, in the tetanus injection, they had a hormone that would prevent implantation of the embryo, and in the HPV, human papillomavirus injection, there were agents in it that allowed, that meant that after 10 or 15 years, those injected, their ovaries shriveled and they went into menopause in their mid-20s for the HPV injection. So this is another injection that I think was particularly chosen to cause inflammation in the testis of uh, men, you know, and teenagers if they're injected and children. And with the women, it causes an immune response to the lining of the womb, the uterus. And so that because they are interfering with the immune system, it means that for the rest of their lives, potentially, if they are injected, that the immune system can target the lining of the womb, and so it will come off in sheets. So it means if you have a fertilized embryo, it may not be able to embed. And when I read the documents 25 years ago, they said it was an attack on increasing, decreasing the life expectancy and increasing the amount of infertility. And so that's why we are kind of in a moment before our precious children and teenagers and university students go back into the education system. We have to hold the university presidents, the people who are doing the injections in all of our countries accountable now. And we do need to have mechanisms that we can actually take action against them as living men and women. And so this is the campaign of notices of liability. 
The other thing that people need to understand is that I've written notices, we'll say, in Ireland to the President, the Prime Minister, you know, the Ministers for Justice and Health. But on top of the notices, you say notice to principal is notice to agent. So the principal is the person in law who may be in charge of an organization, like the president. But notice to agent is notice to everybody in the organization. And even if they get one notice or those notices are communicated around the world, it means that every single head teacher, principal teacher, GP is actually put on notice that these things, there is potential to cause harm. And under the rule of law, it's first do no harm, which is embedded in the Christian principles, do unto others as you would do unto yourself, and also the Hippocratic Oath and the precautionary principle. And under the rule of law, the natural law, ignorance of the law is no defense. And you cannot say you are following orders, and it's very simple. And so I think that is all you need to know. So when I'm traveling you know, to the airports or I'm engaging with anyone, I'm just saying, under the law, we have inalienable rights of freedom of travel, bodily integrity, and freedom of speech. And no one can take away those rights. And if you do, you're engaging in criminal behavior, like a crime of malfeasance, which is the, you know, a malfeasance in public office, which is 10 years in prison, uh, or coercion, which is four years in prison. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And of course, I appreciate it, and um, I'm, I'll finish my talk there, but just to say that obviously we are supported in the World Freedom Alliance um, by lots of hard-working volunteers. Many of them are also whistleblowers and are working inside and are risking their lives to give us medical data. Many thousands of people all around the world are analyzing the data to provide the results. And just before I finish off, the latest figure, sadly, just in the EU alone, of people that have died. So normally a clinical trial would be stopped if there was 25 deaths in the whole world, they would be stopped. And in the four SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 injections, just in the EU alone, more than 20,000 people have died from the injection. And 1.9 million people have had adverse events. So just to finish off, when we, I just say in my warrant, you know the warrant for my arrest, the charges are that I have been speaking publicly, including at public meetings, to say this was last year that um, huge harm would be caused by the injections, and we see more than 20,000 people have died. Those 20,000 people trusted in what they're being told by their prime ministers, by the people who are dressed up as doctors but are not actually caring for people. Um, and by the media who, you know, under crimes against humanity are accountable for not allowing the truth um, to be told. So I would be very happy um, if you would, uh, this information will be put up on DoloresCattle.com, WorldFreedomAlliance.com and this video is to try and share it around the world that, um, you know, I have a public profile and I'm very honoured to have it. But if they are going to silence my voice, what are they trying to do to the nurses and doctors and good teachers and uh, policemen that are trying to stop this? So really what we need to say now is all for one, uh, one for all. And I'm very honored to be here and thank you very much. And we are free, thank you.